This video is sponsored by Deep Cut Studios. For a wide range of fantastic gaming resources such as battle mats, dice trays and pre-painted bases, check out the description below. If you ever head into the Key and Gong, the high-end tea house Little Thunder, you'll most likely meet its madam, Yuko Hamasaki. At first glance, she seems unremarkable. Just a young businesswoman taking care of her girls while making sure things are run smoothly which is the perfect act to have when you run one of the most impressive spy rings I have ever seen. You see, many influential residents of Malifaux head over to the Key and Gong to use its services. And while there, its employers make sure to take special care of them, while also listening for any spilled secrets. Whether it's mumbled words from a sleeping patron, private conversations that aren't really that private, or someone being a little too blabby while drunk, all of those words are taken and sorted by Yuko herself, taking the best bits to be used by the Ten Thunders organization. It's why, despite her not being part of the main family, they trust her so much. Although they would probably trust her a lot less, if they knew how much black male material she has on her fellow lieutenants. Nothing she plans to use, I think. But she knows it's good to have an insurance policy. Not much is known about Yuko's history, and anyone who asks too many questions ends up missing. But there is one piece of it that she keeps close by and as safe as possible. Her little daughter, Chiyo. Not that the little girl appreciates it. You see, her daughter's a bit of a tomboy, having no interest in being a proper little lady. She would rather be out, having adventures, seeking dangers, and picking locks. The last one being something she's rather good at and uses to escape constantly. And every time she does... Yuko sends out Bill Algren to get her back. Besides his name, Bill Algren is also a mystery. He tends to be the quiet type most times, and his rather intimidating presence makes people less than inclined to ask about it. But it's obvious that Yuko trusts him, and wherever Yuko goes, Bill is never far behind. Whether that's working at the Key and Gong making sure no one makes trouble, or heading out with Yuko to act as her muscle. Besides those two personal connections, Yuko can call upon a number of people who know how to use deception to their advantage. Whether that be the deadly actors known as Kabuki Warriors and Bunraku, or the deceptively meek ladies such as the Kunuchis and Geishas. If you ever go to her establishment, my friend, you can be sure that someone there is always listening, looking for any slip of the tongue to use against you. Hi guys, welcome back to our Malifaux Masters Breakdown, where we showcase the factions and personalities vying for soulstones and dominance in the Broken City. Today's episode features the mysterious and alluring Ten Thunders Master, Yuko Hamasaki, who is accompanied by her informant network operating out of the Key and Gong. Yuko's main gameplay mechanics revolve around creating pressure and low efficiency actions in the opposing faction, while also manipulating player hands and scheme declaration. The Key and Gong's headline ability is called Leverage, which grants every model in the keyword a free pass token in the start phase of each turn if the opposing player has revealed any schemes. Yuko's crew are then able to discard one of these pass tokens during opposed duels in order to gain a positive to their flips. This ability forces the enemy to second guess when they should declare their schemes, giving Yuko more time to intercept their plans. To this end, much of the Key and Gong have access to the Lore ability, which can pull both friendly and enemy forces across the battlefield, changing points of engagement and essential positioning for VP. While many crews might balk at the risks posed by dragging enemies towards them, Yuko's faction offer an abundance of the distracted condition to ensure that any attacks faced are at a negative modifier. These two abilities combined dramatically reduce the action efficiency of opposing forces, giving you the upper hand each turn. Leading the Key and Gong into battle is the excellent toolbox master Yuko, who offers formidable means of hand control for both players through her abilities. Unseen Manipulator permanently reduces the enemy's control hand size, while Calm Demeanor and Informant allow her to manage her own hand and either player's next fate deck flip at a 6 inch range. Yuko's headline attack action is known as Blackmail, which not only generates pass tokens or discarded cards for the opponent, but also features a pseudo obey with a We Own You trigger which is almost always worth a soulstone investment to get off. Finally, your master's bonus action is often a good reason to see it activate early in order to see your enemy's control hand, with a 1 in 4 chance of dishing out some damage to the afflicted model too. 
Accompanying her master into battle is the enforcer Totem Chio, a hard to hit scheme runner who features her own way of reading the opposing control hand thanks to her misinformation bonus action. Chio's ability to generate past tokens when in the opposing half makes her quite the target for the enemy, but it will be quite the concerted effort given her disguised and stealth abilities, making it a costly endeavour for them. Next up we have the first of the Qiyong Dong's two henchmen options in Hinamatsu, the Neverborn puppet beater who excels at both speed and damage. Hin has effective 9 inch charge range thanks to the rush ability, as well as an inbuilt positive flip on her sword combined with flurry make her activations potentially devastating for any unwitting victims, especially if she is able to hit that onslaught trigger. 6 potential attacks will ruin anything, but if the stars don't quite align you can always fall back on the excellent aggressive stance quick action to pulse out distracted within 3 inches, as well as the wicked ability which can allow normal damage attacks should an opponent try to disengage from the murder bot in close combat. Alternatively, you could exchange some of this output for even greater mobility with Bill Algram, the Qian Gong's regular bodyguard who features both healing and support thanks to his stoic nod and heroic intervention abilities. The latter can not only be used to free up allies who are stuck in combat, but with a crow trigger, Bill is also able to remove opposing ski markers anywhere in play, scuppering many plans in the process. Finally, Algren's We Have Unfinished Business ability grants him fast once an opponent reveals the scheme, providing a frankly ridiculous movement with his Naginata strike if he's able to secure his mass trigger more than once. Making up for the Qian Gong's distinct lack of enforcers, an exciting suite of minions, starting with the 8 Soulstone Kabuki Warrior, a frontline melee fighter who also reduces enemy willpower duels thanks to its distraction ability. The warrior is no slouch in combat with a stat 6 min 3 greatsword attack that can also throw out distracted on a tome trigger. Finally, combat finesse ensures that opposing models cannot cheat melee attacks against you, leaving them at the whim of their fate decks. Also joining the fray is the joint monk minion in the charm order, a 7 soulstone model that specifically targets enemy willpower with their chi blade and jinx attacks, with the latter featuring the shady dealings trigger which can force card drain for unrevealed schemes. The charm order is excellent at turning off demise abilities thanks to its lantern of souls, and is also capable of ridiculous deck drain or damage if its chaos theory bonus action is able to pulse at enough for enemies within 5 inches. Moving on, for 6 soul stones you can invest in the Kunoichi, a model that can take advantage of the distracted status for the rest of the crew as handed out thanks to its unexpected ferocity trigger on both its ranged and melee actions. Tools for the job allows you to recycle any high cards from previous activations, while the ever useful nihilism ensures that these ninja can attack with full force from the wings. Alternatively, for the same cost you might instead consider the ferocious Bunraku, tanky puppets that can go up to defense 7 thanks to their built-in disappear trigger. These puppets are pretty quick across the board thanks to their move 6 and risky maneuver quick action, and can put out decent damage and the ever useful stun condition with their brutal blades melee attack. Yuko can field these minions as excellent hunters of opposing scheme runners, as well as effective point scorers in their own right. Finally, the Qian Gong has its ever-present cohort of geisha to provide suitable distraction for opposing forces. Not only do these ladies reduce the willpower duels of their enemies within 2 inches, but they're also highly capable of adding status conditions and repositioning through sharp wit and lure. While not the most durable at 4 defense and wounds, the geisha are often a safe activation to harry and debuff enemies early each turn. The Qian Gong keyword plays as much of the game between activations as it does during them, putting plenty of emphasis on draining enemy resources and forcing difficult decisions and timing. The crew excels at manipulating card hands and opposing scheming, while offering good mid-range maneuverability, damage and control. Yuka and her minions are adept at dictating the point of engagement on the battlefield, meaning schemes and strategies that revolve around engagement and the board center naturally play to her advantage. Once here, the abundance of distracted and possible positives through pass tokens mean that your model should have a good chance of dictating play in later turns. King Gong are at the best when you are constantly aware of the scheme pool and where your opponent wants to be each turn, as their denial can be second to none with a combination of lures and card drain. That being said, if you are opposing the Qian Gong, there are some definite areas that can be targeted and exploited. First and foremost is their survivability in early turns, especially under high pressure from Alpha Strike crews or advanced deployment. Pools that revolve around killing might mean that your pass tokens are less of an advantage when heavy hitters like Hinamatsu and Bill Algren are already off the board. 
Likewise, highly maneuverable crews that can skirt the edges of the battlefield or stand at range are again problematic for the Qian Gong to deal with, especially if they have high willpower stats. However, it should be noted that this is only considering the keyword in a vacuum, as the Ten Thunders have a multitude of versatile options that can shore up these weaknesses. Finally, here's an example of a Yuko crew if you're looking at taking her out for a spin, featuring a balance list accompanied by the versatile Dawn Serpent for additional scheme support and card drain. Use Yuko and her 7 Soul Stones to push through key triggers such as We Own You, while the Kabuki Warrior and Hinamatsu destroy targets that have been lured in by the Geisha and the Bunraku. From there, use your Charm Warder that can bring the pain with Chaos Theory and Jinx as you look to press the advantage once the schemes are revealed later. So that brings us to the end of this Malifaux Master Breakdown. We hope it's been useful in giving you a snapshot of its crew and their mechanics. A massive thank you in addition to the vocal talents of the wonderful Arvandus during the video's intro. You can find more of his excellent lore content in the links in the description below. For more talk about Malifaux and its masters, why not check out our podcast, The Harlefaux Show, where we break down each keyword and why you should play it. Alternatively, we have a wealth of beginner-friendly battle reports here on the channel that guide players through every flip and decision. Whichever you choose, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care, folks. Hi guys, thank you very much for watching our content. It means the world to us. If you'd like to see some more videos, they should be over here. And if you'd like to support our channel, keep these lights on. You can find links to our Patreon and merchandise in the description below. See you later.